Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video. Welcome back to Monster Hunter World. And today I'm going to be bringing you another one of my builds. This time around, it is going to be a support build, given the fact that the new Cold to Roth set kind of lends itself really nicely to being a good support set. I figured I'd work something around it. Uh, and also, given that Cold to Roth is around and she's kind of challenging for some people that maybe have not faced her in the past. Or maybe you're not just like super ready for it with this set you might be able to help out a lot of groups achieving the killing blow on goldilocks so let's get started by taking a look at the weapon that we are going to be using on this set and it is the light break sword it is a sword and shield build it's uh, fairly easy to utilize and to keep people healed up while at the same time being able to deal a respectable amount of damage that's why i went with the light break sword because it doesn't require to go to safi and farm out a bunch of safi make a very specific weapon which i actually did for this set but uh, I would advise you just stick with the Light Break Sword because overall it is just a fantastic weapon. It's got some god tier slots and it's also got purple sharpness, decent damage, decent affinity, decent blast. It's just a really good all round weapon. Now, in terms of augmentations, I didn't really change from the usual augmentations that I tend to put in most weapons, which is your health regen, your affinity augment and element status effect up if it is uh, a weapon that's got element and or status, right? Now let's take a look at the armor pieces that we're going to be working with here. And in order to get the most benefit from the Kulf to Roth set for a support type build, you're going to need four pieces of Kulf to Roth. Now in this case, we're going to be using the helmet, chest piece, gloves, and pants because those were the pieces that I personally like the most. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't much care for the belt personally. It's got some peak performance and stuff like that. So I was like, well, let's get rid of that because most likely we're not going to be in uh, peak performance condition throughout most of the fights that we're going to be uh, doing while we're supporting everybody else. So whatever. And I figured on other stats. Now, when it comes to uh, sockets on the weapon itself, we're going to be putting a tenderizer vitality deco coupled together with a flight decoration. Now, the flight decoration is very much optional. Like I told you guys in the past, I just really like using um, the sword and shield helm breaker. Therefore, I like having a flight jewel to increase the amount of damage that it actually does. And by the way, uh, some people tend to confuse the helm breaker attack with the shield down attack. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, I don't even remember the, the falling bash, whatever it is, the, the shield attack where you come in from, from the air and you just like drop the shield on top of the monster. That's not the helm breaker. The helm breaker is when you run up against like a mushroom wall or something like that and your character just kind of like does a running attack and then jumps off and starts plunging down into the monster with a sword. That's the helm breaker. And that attack is most definitely affected by the flight decoration. But anyway, let's get right back to it. On the helmet, we got Kulftaroth's Fury Beta. Uh, the alpha is really good for gunners, but we're going to be going for melee, so I went with the beta there. It's got really good sockets, and we got uh, Tenderize Vitality on there as well, as well as Brace Vitality and an Expert Decoration. Now we got the Kulftaroth's Ire Alpha because we want to get that free meal coupled together with the speed eating. Uh, and in there, we're putting a Phoenix decoration as well as an Evasion decoration. As you guys know, I really like uh, dodging with the Sword and Shield. So having a, a little bit of Evasion in there is just something that I always try to put in my Sword and Shield sets. And the Phoenix decoration is just there to uh, increase your damage a little bit whenever you happen to be poisoned or catch a little bit of fire if you're fighting Kul'th or something like that. Uh, you'll be able to d dish out a significant amount of damage with just one point in um, Coalescence. So, yeah, then we got the Kulf to Roth's Rage Alpha with another Evasion Jewel and a Tenderizer Jewel, maxing out Weakness Exploit. We're going to be getting a lot of damage parts, uh, a lot of damage decorations in here. You're going to be able to dish out respectable damage with this while still being able to support, which is why I really like this set. You can do this with uh, a uh, hunting horn as well, if you prefer doing it that way. It's just my personal preference goes towards sword and shield. So if you want to do it with a hunting horn, go ahead. I'm pretty sure that you can replace one of the decos in here for like a uh, sonorous jewel or something and figure that stuff out. But yeah, in the belt, we got the golden loon coil uh, beta. Uh, this was just to give me uh, a little bit more protection because a lot of the times when you're trying to chug potions because your friends are about to die or something like that, you might find yourself in a situation where you will have to take a hit. Uh, therefore, having Divine Protection helps. Uh, I was actually running Divine Protection Secret with a Safi weapon, but um, yeah, for, for now, I, I prefer the Lightbreak Sword because I was able to get more, squeeze more damage out of it. 
Um, and then we got Expert Jewel plus four, as well as a Sharp Jewel in there. Now, the reason behind this is because usually I tend to play a lot with Tiosu's Technique, as you guys know. So not having Tiosu's Technique means that every now and then sharpness is going to go a little bit lower than I usually am accustomed to. So I just put the Sharp Jewel in there so that if I have to sharpen, then I'll have a grace period before the, the sharpness goes down again. I have Cold to Roth's Wrath Beta, which is one of the best legs in the business right now. We put a Friendship Evasion Deco in there, granting us three Evade Window, which is pretty nice. We got another Friendship Jewel in here. You can change these if you don't want as much Evade Window as I have. There's actually Friendship plus four, and then that leaves you with another free slot if you want to. And then we got Associated Jewel to max out free meal. When it comes to Charms, we're going to wrap things up with a Master Charm 4, which is going to be uh, allow us to max out critical eye and then we got a glider mantle with two challenger jewel plus fours if you do not have these just put whatever decos you want here really the glider mantle is just there to grant you additional decos as a matter of fact if you're fighting um cold to roth i'd actually advise you just put fireproof uh mantle in here maybe particularly if you're struggling and then just put whatever you want in the decorations really it's not really a big deal uh in my opinion and then with the uh temporal mantle you got the two maintenance jewels you guys already know why i put those in there it's just to get that initial wall bang guarantee. Uh, but yeah, looking at the uh, finalized build here, we got Critical Eye level 7, Wide Range level 5, Health Boost level 3, Critical Boost level 3, Weakness Exploit level 3, Evade Wendel level 3, Free Meal level 3, which is downright broken for all intents and purposes, Speed Eating level 3, which is very, very, very nice, uh, Divine Blessing level 3, Airborne Flinch Free, in case you're playing with friends and stuff, it's always useful. You can replace that deco if you don't want to have flinch free. Although, if you're not playing with friends, that kind of like defeats the purpose of using this particular set, doesn't it? They also have uh, Protective Polish, Coalescence, uh, Tier 4 Agitator when you rock in the Glider Mantle or whatever you happen to put on there. And with your set bonus skills, you got both Guts as well as Free Meal Secret. Now, what that means is that most of the consumables that you use you're not going to use. So the way that I do it is I just carry around Mega Demon Drugs, Mega Armor Drugs, Dash Juices, which I usually just use Dash Juices as opposed to um, the um, the meat. I just re replenish my stamina with Dash Juices nowadays because you can get them fairly easy through Steamworks and then melding them and stuff like that. So you just pop those three buffs uh, and that way I, I prevent having to use Mushroom Mancer and I just give them the buffs straight up from... Uh, you know, dash juice, demon drug, uh, armor, all that jazz. And then on top of that, whenever you need a heal, just pop a mega potion with free meal. Um, you, you'll find that you'll be able to get like, I don't know, a good 30 to 40 uses of um, 10 mega potions before you actually run out. So you'll be able to keep your friends healed up for a significant period of time, even if they are like standing on fire and stuff. I, I was able to keep people alive while they were standing, literally standing on fire and dying and stunned and stuff like that. I'm just like, I'm just gonna keep chugging mega potions non-stop and it's not even a problem. But yeah, that's the build. Let me know what you guys think about it. Uh, personally, I thought it was a, a fun little build, something uh, to play around with because unfortunately I can't really do uh, Gunlance and Cold to Roth is just not uh, the adequate weapon for Cold to Roth at all. It always makes me sad when there's a monster where like the Gunlance just does not perform as well. And Cold to Roth is definitely one of those, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. How are you guys enjoying Cold to Roth? I have a, a guide coming up pretty soon on the channel, hopefully, uh, for all of you guys with uh, all the details on Cold to Roth, the weapons, all of that jazz. So look forward to that. But yeah, that's going to be it for now. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed, like button, all the usual stuff. If you did not enjoy it, hit this like button. Feedback is important. Feedback, which you can also leave in the comment section down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong. May your shields never break. Stay safe. Stay indoors and wash your hands. Peace out, team.